Good morning, Asia, fellow privateers. Well, well, well. We've been very cautious on the equity markets, <clears throat> dipping our toes in long volatility type trades in the VIX currencies. And uh, the first chart I want to show you is alarming. <clears throat> Most of you may not know what this is, but it's called the XIV. It's the inverse VIX. So the VIX goes down, this thing goes up, right? It's an ETF, ETN, whatever you want to call it. Something you can't see from this chart, because I don't have the data, but I was looking on Bloomberg. Uh, about five minutes ago, we closed here today at 99, and in after hours, it has, it is trading somewhere around here, like 20-ish. So you can see, the last time we were down at 20 was June 2nd, 2016. In other words, this thing is down about 80% since the stock market closed today. Um, don't fully understand how these things work, but this is probably going to zero and it's going to require some sort of government intervention. Uh, so stay, you know, stay tuned on this one. But, uh, you know, we did look at this. I confirmed with a few sources, some of my equity friends, and it is indeed, it, it, it did trade down around 20 um, is not good. This is why you don't pick up pennies in front of the, the steamroller. Cryptos, I'm going to look at the charts. Highly correlated with equities. We've been talking about this for weeks. Bitcoin 6777. Ethereum, the, the safe haven crypto, if you will, down 16%. Oh, what the hell? Let's take a look at a chart. Off its lows. Two thirds FIBO of all time for Ethereum comes in here at 550. I'll be buying some down there. Let's uh, let's take a look at what the S and P's Nasdaq did today. Complete and utter bloodbath called Black Monday. We warned of this. I had some troubles with the video on uh, yesterday. We did warn of this though. It was a bullish, uh, bearish engulfing week in the S&Ps. We have since collapsed. We closed underneath the 100-day moving average for the first time in since October 2016, which was the, here is your Trump victory day. The big down move and then up and never looked back. Tested it twice. So... You know, a little cautious here, obviously very oversold. Sentiment is, has gone from 96% to 18% in the S&Ps and NASDAQ. Uh, you know, similar type move in the NASDAQ. The DAX just has come completely unglued. Um, that's not a great looking chart because of the data that I'm getting here, but you know, I was looking at it on Bloomberg earlier today. So maybe a little bit of a pause here. Uh, S and P's are trading twenty six thirty. Uh, they did go down to twenty five ninety five for a brief period, right after the close, and uh, they're bouncing a bit. The Nikkei uh, Asian Asian stock markets are, are struggling a bit here. Uh, unfortunately, as currency traders, we were expecting some. Some big moves in the old days. If you saw a move like this in the S&Ps, Euro Yen would probably be down. Oh, I don't know, 500 points, maybe a thousand points. You know, Dollar Yen would start a trade in the day up here at 110.15. We've seen days like this with the, in the equities where it's gone down 500 points in in short order. We didn't get that today. We got a 
very minor sell-off. It did get to, it did drop about a hundred points, but it took all day, and it, it really waited for that the late equity selling uh, late in New York to to actually uh, drop. We traded the break of 109. <clears throat> 109. Uh, traded through this low, this 109.64 area, which was the overnight low in Asia during your uh, during your session, and that did work. Got down to 109.12, back up here, close this hour. Uh, where close 109.60, basically right just just below the breakout. Now it's consolidating lower. Um, again, back when the correlation was equities. Equity selling equals cross yen selling, and it was a, a very good, easy trade for us. That's not happening. Um, I mean, Aussie yen had a bit of a move. CAD yen is somewhat interesting. That had a decent break today. We were highlighting this 87.80 area, this old low right here, the, the uh, dashed line. That was a good clean break. That actually went straight down. Um, you got about 80 pips out of that. It's back up. You know, it's bounced a little bit with some of the other uh, yen crosses. Uh, but even, you know, the, the only other one that we were kind of looking at is this dollar CAD. We just took out this 125.30 level here um, and, and kind of failed. We got some stops. Maybe it went up to, uh, what did it get up to, 43. Uh, we are hanging around these levels. We're still, it still looks pretty, fairly good. Uh, we do like that higher, and that that was part of the CAD yen move, you know, between the dollar yen dropping and dollar CAD going up. Um, Euro, one of our one of our favorite setups was this 126 uh, right here, 120, sorry, 123.83 break, and that didn't work great. It it went really late in New York, where there's no one participating. This one down here, this 123.37, seems to be uh, more important. One thing that we're we're thinking about, you know, slightly bigger picture is when you start seeing liquidation, XIV, that inver inverse ETF, the VIX, start seeing uh, liquidation in 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 this case, we started seeing some of it in the bonds. And now we're seeing it in uh, in the equities. The macro funds need to go and find things that have been working, where they've been winning, and they have to get out of that. They have to take profit. <coughs> I did a quick search on Bloomberg earlier today. Um, the best performing currencies against the dollar in 2018, Norwegian Krone, number one. Swiss franc, number two, British pound, number three, and the euro dollar, number four. So for me, those are the four currencies I'm looking at in the next couple days after some of the dust settles in the equity sell-off where there will be pressure on these currencies. And, uh, you know, we saw it a little bit in Nor Norway today. We're seeing the euro consolidating around this 123.80 level. British pound took out. Uh, we had a we had a break uh, a break trade under uh, one thirty nine eighty that we played. It, again, it was late in New York. It wasn't great. You know, we're we're slightly lower. Um, so basically, they're booking their winners. That they, they need to sell their winners to pay for the losers. So we expect more downside in in those in those currencies against the dollar. And you could also look at it, you know, dollar yen has been has been artificially bid for the past uh, past week or so. Remember, we talked about how strong dollar yen was, and then they went with their open ended purchases, and, and no real change to yield curve control. So, you know, as of <coughs> toward the end of January, we bottomed down here at this 108 uh, 2530 level, and had a nice run back up to 11040 um, on Friday. You know, we're, we are starting to see some of this. So cross yen, you, know, you can take your pick. Aussie yen, big down day. Cad yen, we booked that. Euro yen's coming under pressure. Sterling yen came under some heavy selling pressure today. 
Yeah, we think that a lot of this can uh, retrace and, and get back down to these 2018 lows at the very least. We have a uh, whole slew of Australian data today with trade balance, retail sales, and then uh, a couple hours after we have the RBA, which we're not expecting much with the RBA. Um, so I would, uh, you know, we'll be we'll be looking to trade Aussie and some of the Aussie crosses if there are some moves. Um, Currency-wise, everything's pretty stable right now. S&P is consolidating around 26.30. Uh, dollar yen isn't doing anything. Aussie and Kiwi aren't really doing much. Uh, but uh, pay attention. Volatility is back. Be curious to see how this uh, XIV product plays out. Um, we think that uh, I think the, la the last I looked it was trading around 20, so about an 80% drop. And there's a, a lot of the press is speaking about it. If you're watching Bloomberg or CNBC, they're talking about this big move. So uh, good luck, tin hat time. And we will speak to you on the European Open. All the best.